Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to London. Today, I'm starting at Parliament Square, where you'll find Westminster Abbey, Palace of Westminster, and Big Ben. Today, I'm gonna to share with you an area of London called South Bank, which is just across Westminster Bridge there, which is hugely popular with tourists and in parts Londoners too. So let's head across the bridge and uh, check out the south. Okay, we're on the northern bank of the River Thames here. The Palace of Westminster of Big Ben are on the north bank of the River Thames and we're going to head across to the southern bank of the River Thames. But when we refer to the area known as South Bank, it's not the entire southern bank of the River Thames. The river stretches for miles, not just through London, but through England. Um, it's just a small area on the southern bank of the River Thames here in the centre of London. Check this out. A wedding. A wedding. On Westminster Bridge. Um, it is home to some of London's major tourist attractions. Palace of Westminster, Houses of Parliament, Big Ben. And also, um, on the South Bank, I think most Londoners would consider the South Bank the area from here, um, Westminster Bridge, the area of Riverbank here that stretches from Westminster Bridge to Blackfriars Bridge down there. I would show it to you. It's completely obscured by uh, buses and coaches. Um, but we'll head down there in a moment. I'll show you where you can get a great picture of Big Ben and how's the Parliament just down here. It was such a popular spot to get uh, married. Okay, as you can see, all the tourists fighting to get down the stairs there. There's a tunnel under the street, which is also a great spot to get a uh, picture of Big Ben. I'll show you. Until the 1950s, there was not much here to attract visitors. The South Bank was a mix of industry, wasteland and slums. However, in the 1950s, the Festival of Britain was held across Britain with its centerpiece exhibition here on the South Bank, kickstarting the rejuvenation of the area and the South Bank we know today, and we can take a look at what's left of that in a moment. The South Bank is home to a number of major London attractions, including one of the most popular, the London Eye. You also get phenomenal views of the London skyline from street level. Okay. This is the spot. You see a lot of people taking uh, Instagram and social media photos. It's also great because in this tunnel, you're uh, protected from the weather. So if it's raining, this is a great spot for a photo. And the tunnel here leads straight out to the south bank below um, be in front of County Hall and uh, just next to the London Hall. Okay, this stretch of uh, riverbank here in front of County Hall, I normally do my best to avoid. Um, I'm pretty sure half the tourists in town are, half of them are in Leicester Square, and the other half are here. So I normally go along the north bank across at the bridges just down there, um, but I can't make a film about the south bank and not come here. But um, let's head down to the London Eye and then I'll show you how I normally get here. 
Okay, the huge complex of buildings we're standing in front of is called County Hall, originally built for the Greater London Council, which was abolished in 1986. So the building was sold to private investors and today is home to a number of London attractions, a couple of hotels, restaurants and bars. So let's check out what's here. Okay, here we have the, the London Aquarium. Hugely popular with uh, both Londoners and visitors to London. The London Aquarium is a hugely popular attraction here on the South Bank. They've got a phenomenal array of sea life for you to see. Some of the aquariums you can even walk through. They have tunnels through them. They've got sharks, seahorses, even penguins. London Dungeon. The London Dungeon is another big attraction here on the South Bank. Originally it was over by London Bridge. Now it's here on the South Bank. It's a mix of shows and rides and it's interactive. It's a mix of fun and scary and it explores London's gory and gruesome past. Okay, welcome to the London Eye. It's cool to see it up close, but I think you get better views, better photos of it from the North Bank rather than here on the South Bank. Um, and I try and avoid that section of the river at all costs. Um, I'll show you how I normally get here. We're going to get some, uh, I'll show you the, what it looks like from the north bank. Then we'll come back here. Let's go. The London Eye was first built to open in the year 2000 as part of London's Millennium celebrations. So originally it was called the Millennium Wheel. The name later changed to the London Eye. And when it was first constructed, it was the largest Ferris wheel, the largest observation wheel in Europe. It was later superseded and lost that title. At the time when it was built, it was also the highest observation platform um, here in London, but it was later superseded by the Shard, which is now currently the, uh, the highest viewing platform here in London, although nothing stays the biggest or the tallest for long here, so that will probably be superseded too. And as I was saying, probably the best views of the uh, the London Eye are from the North Bank. Obviously some of the best views of London are from the London Eye itself, but we'll go round here to the North Bank and take a look at the London Eye itself. Okay, I just rediscovered why I avoid the bridge and that section of, uh, of Riverbank at all costs. I'll show you we can get a great uh, a great picture and a better view of the London Eye. This is a film about the, uh, the South Bank and we're on the North Bank but um, you actually get better views of the South Bank from the North Bank and it's not so jam-packed with people. So as you can see from here on the North Bank, you get much better views of County House and the London Eye than from right below them. Also, all along here, along the street, are these benches, these seats. So you can take a seat and watch the boats go by, watch the London Eye go around, and watch all the people go by. Just along here, I'll show you where the best spot is to get a, uh, a great picture of the London Eye itself, and then we'll head back over to the South Bank. I don't think that is. I don't think that is a photo shoot. I think it is actually a, uh, a wedding. You get a lot of photo shoots along here, but uh, that had guests. I don't normally have guests at photo shoots. Okay, if you want a good photo, 
video time lapse of the London Eye, this is the spot. And then, we'll cross these bridges to get back to the South Bank. So this is the perfect spot to take pictures of the London Eye or selfies with the London Eye. I'm going to speed the footage up 20 times just to show you the London Eye rotating. It normally takes around 30 minutes for a full revolution. It's a speed that allows people to walk on and off without them stopping it. However, as you can see, they do stop it to allow the elderly or people with disabilities on and off safely. Okay, pretty cool, huh? I'm going to head down to the bridges here. Um, which is how I would normally get to the South Bank rather than going to say Westminster Tube and crossing Westminster Bridge. Um, trying to avoid Westminster Bridge and that section of uh, Riverbank we were first on. I normally come to Embankment Tube which is just here, just outside Embankment Tube but the bridges will cross here and they take you right to the South Bank and actually from these bridges you get phenomenal views of Westminster, Westminster Bridge, um, Big Ben, Palace of Westminster um, and County Hall. I'll show you. South Bank quite a lot and this is the these are the bridges I normally use it's actually more than one bridge it's three bridges um, I think the one in the middle is called the Hungerford Bridge which are the train tracks that run out of Charing Cross Station which is just up there to Waterloo I think it's down there and then either side of the train bridge are these pedestrian footbridges I think they're called the Queen Elizabeth Queen Elizabeth the second bridge I think but yeah, great views, let's go up here. Just through there as well, um, is Embankment Tube Station. Um, another entrance is actually out on the main road. So yeah, very easy to get to. Slightly less crowded than Westminster. Okay, these are not the Queen Elizabeth II bridges. They are in fact the Golden Jubilee Bridges. I wasn't far off. They're Queen Elizabeth II's Golden Jubilee Bridges. There is a Queen Elizabeth II bridge. You don't want to go there. It's miles away. It's also called the Dartford Crossing. Um, I've driven across it many times. It's part of the M25 motorway. You definitely don't want to walk across it. Okay, you get great views of the London skyline from here. Super popular with visits. Also, there are these engraved illustrations of the London skyline. There's one at both ends of both sides of the bridge and all of the buildings have been named so you can see exactly what you're looking at. Pretty cool, huh? Right. Let's head over to the South Bank again. The South Bank area actually stretches quite a way back from the river and includes some amazing places to visit like the Imperial War Museum, but today I'm going to stick very closely to the banks of the River Thames. There's enough here to keep us occupied for days. At each end of these bridges there are steps, but there are also lifts for the elderly and people with disabilities. Here at this part of the South Bank, we're heading back to where we were before, but you get a better idea of what the South Bank is, this traffic-free boulevard, which is perfect for riverside walks, albeit apart from that section in front of County House, and you've got great views of the London skyline. Okay, back where we, back where we were, below the London Eye. This section of river here is an amazing spot to uh, watch some street performers. Um, probably second only to Covent Garden. We've got uh, Charlotte Campbell singing here. Here. We've got the major attractions there, uh, County Hall, 
um, London Eye, um, head to the South Bank Centre, and uh, then further along the river, try and check out some of uh, the South Bank's hidden gems. Let's go to the South Bank Centre first. The South Bank Centre is the next major complex of buildings we'll come to along the river from County Hall. The South Bank Centre is very much an ugly duckling story. The Festival of Britain was held in 1951, which was a nationwide program of events to lift spirits all across Britain. Art, culture, film, science, architecture, fun fairs, pleasure gardens. It was a huge success. The Royal Festival Hall, the music venue at the heart of the South Bank Centre today, was built here as part of the 1951 Festival of Britain. And after the festival, to try and recapture some of the success, further buildings were added to build a permanent arts and culture centre. The Hayward Gallery, the Queen Elizabeth Hall and the Purcell Rooms. OK, right now here we have the other belly, underbelly festival. So I'll pop back later. Americano coffee from Beanie Green. Hot. Pretty good though. Good coffee. There's a there's a street food market, South Bank Food Festival, um, just down there. Coming back to later to get some lunch. Let's go and check out what's uh going on in the South Bank Centre right now. Um, great views of the Thames from here. The South Bank Centre from the outside looks, well, grey. However, inside it's a phenomenal arts and culture centre. It originally failed to appeal to the public. By the 1970s and 80s, this area was most popular with London's homeless as a place to shelter beneath. But things slowly improved. The use of County Hall changed, the London Eye then came, a little redevelopment here, some gentrification there, and today the area is what it was always hoped it would be, a world famous arts and culture centre, and hugely popular with both Londoners and visitors. Built in an architectural style known as brutalist, austere, utilitarian looking raw concrete buildings, you can't miss it. It looks like a concrete bunker. Some people love the style, some hate it. Either way, London is home to some of the finest examples of it in the world. Okay, there's a lot going on in here, um, but nothing hugely theatrical uh, or free that I can share with you guys. Um, so, uh, Definitely recommend a visit there. Um, check out what's going on. Sometimes you can catch free events um, in the centre itself, um, which is always cool. Um, let's head down to the skate park. We'll be coming back here in a little while to get some lunch. I have mixed feelings about this brutalist architecture. When I was a kid there was far more about and London was a very grey and depressing place. You definitely don't want too much of this. I think the designs are good but the choice of materials is wrong but maybe that's all they had at the time. I think if you built these designs today using the most modern materials they would look really cool but whatever you build out of raw concrete is always going to risk looking like an ugly council car park. Just down these stairs is the South Bank Centre's very own riverfront skate park. The area wasn't intentionally built as a skate park, it just happens to be perfect for street skating. It's been a popular place to skate since the 1970s. So popular with spectators they had to put these rails in to separate skaters and spectators. The rails also happen to be perfect for skating. The South Bank Centre powers that B spent a long time in previous decades and probably considerable legal fees trying to move it, aka get rid of it. That's on hold for now. Hindsight's a wonderful thing and maybe in previous decades this was not a desirable thing to have. However, today the biggest brands in the world attempt to tap into skating because skating's cool. 
We've got the skating itself, the boards, the clothing, there's photography, video, street art, the culture and community that comes with it, and of course, commerce. It's got brand ambassadors, it's got the lot. The South Bank Centre is still not tapping into this well beneath them, and they should, and we all know why. Snobbery. If they wanted this to work, they could open a skate shop next door in one of the existing stores, they could host skate exhibitions, retrospectives, even competitions. Here in London we have an art gallery on the first floor with its very own skate park and street art in its undercroft. That's the coolest thing in the world, no arts and culture centre competing on a global stage has its own skate park. The only thing making the South Bank Centre less cool was trying to get rid of it. They need to find a way to connect the art gallery upstairs and skate park on street level for both skaters and spectators, not further disconnect it. Pretty cool, huh? Hugely popular with uh, visitors. Watch me skate. If you're planning a trip to London, definitely see what's going on here at the South Bank. And if you're in London, just come along because there's usually always some pop-up event happening, both inside and out. You've often got free performances and exhibitions, and then outside everything from festive winter markets to a beach complete with deck chairs in the summer. There are often sponsored pop-up food and drink events here on the riverfront too. There's a roof garden above the Queen Elizabeth Hall there with a cafe which is open during the summertime which is cool. And just here on South Bank under Waterloo Bridge is one of London's hidden gems and one of the very few outdoor second-hand and antique book markets in England. It's open daily until about 7pm or until it gets dark, whichever comes sooner. Yeah, I think the book market here is uh, definitely one of London's hidden gems. And uh, it's just outside the National Theatre, uh, below, Wa below Waterloo Bridge. Um, we head a little bit further down to uh, another one, London's hidden gems and the South Bank's hidden gems, Gabriel's Wall. Um, most people just walk straight past it. It's just before the OXO, uh, the OXO Town Building, so let's go and check that out. Oh my God, you just here on the right is the National Theatre, or to give it its full title, the Royal National Theatre. It has three theatres with up to 25 new shows each year. You can also go on behind the scenes theatre tours. There's a restaurant and Riverside Bar in there also. As well as theatre shows, the National Theatre hosts talks, courses, workshops and exhibitions. So if you'd like to see a show or are interested in theatre, definitely check out what's going on there. Okay. If you're British and unemployed, you're probably very familiar with this TV show. Have you ever wondered what the view out of the studio windows is? This is it. For those of you not from Britain, this morning is a daytime television show, one of Britain's longest running TV shows. It's filmed live here at Studio A each day and it's a mix of entertainment, news, chat and washed up celebrities. Okay. Great views of the river, the studio's there. Just before we get to the Oxo Tower Wharf, which is just here. It's Gabriel's Wharf. Really one of the South Bank's hidden gems. Gabriel's Wharf has a fantastic location, right on the banks of the River Thames next to the Oxo building. However, its narrow entranceway here is probably what made it remain one of London's hidden gems. It's home to more independent boutique stores. It's not all small independent businesses, but they are all more design-led goods and services, both here in Gabriel's Wharf and in the Oxo building next door. You've got jewellery, fashion, furnishings, art, and of course, food and drink. It's a phenomenal spot in the summer. and out on the river, on the riverfront, you get great views of the City of London skyline from here, including St Paul's Cathedral. Okay, Gabriel's Wharf is cool. Um, part of the River Thames here. Um, at low tide, you can uh, get down there. It's uh, almost like a beach. Almost like a beach. It's not low tide though.
Okay, let's go and check out the uh, the Oxo Tower. Um, some of the stores in there. And then that's pretty much as far as I want to go today. And then I'm going to head back to South Bank Centre and get some food from the uh, street food market. Amazing views of St Paul's from here. The red brick waterfront building here is the Oxo building, it's an iconic London landmark. There was originally a power station here which supplied power to Royal Mail. When that became obsolete the building was purchased in around the 1920s by the Liebig Extract of Meat Company aka Lemco to be converted into cold storage and most of the original power station except for the front here was demolished in that development. Lemco and its founder are a long and interesting story. But in short, they produce meat extracts designed to be inexpensive alternatives to meat for those that could not afford the real thing. However, many couldn't even afford the liquid extract, so Lemco developed cubes that could be dissolved in water, one of which was called OXO. They wanted to advertise OXO on the side of this building, but Skyline Advertising was banned here at the time. So somehow they managed to get planning approval for the folly of a tower on top of the building, and each side has three windows, and the windows just happen to spell out OXO. Oxo is still available today and also many related products. The company was bought and sold and moved multiple times and this building by the early 1980s was empty and left derelict. Along with much of the South Bank, the building was purchased by the Coin Street Community Builders which has since the 1980s been working to transform the South Bank from the mess it was in back then to the thriving neighbourhood it is today. They converted the Oxo building into a mix of shops, cafes, bars, galleries, workshops, some flats and a rooftop restaurant. The development won many awards and when it opened the rooftop restaurant was one of the most fashionable in town. At the time the restaurant had some of the most phenomenal views of the London skyline. It has since been dwarfed many times by other buildings and some restaurants now look down on this one. It is still a great view of London from up there. It's a great spot for both fine and casual dining. However, we're headed somewhere even more casual for something to eat today. Okay, amazing views of the London skyline um, from these wharfs or piers. Um, let's head back down to the South Bank Centre and um, get some lunch. Okay guys, welcome to the South Bank Centre food markets. Right behind the South Bank Centre, the shadow of the London Eye. Some amazing food down here, so let's go and see what looks good. Get some lunch. The South Bank Centre food markets here behind the Royal Festival Hall are not London's largest speciality food specific markets. However, over the years, it's probably one of the ones I've visited the most for something to eat because it's a phenomenal location. We're just a short walk across the river via the Golden Jubilee Bridges from Embankment Tube and many of London's major landmarks. There's enough choice here to make the market interesting but not so much, it's overwhelming. It always draws a crowd but it's not ridiculous. So it makes the market very easy to navigate and gives it a phenomenal atmosphere. It's a very relaxed market, a great place to come and browse, get something to eat and relax. Okay, smell all this food is phenomenal. Let's see what looks good. Above all else, the market here has always sold delicious food. It's a well curated market, so you get a wide choice of styles from all around the world, and there's often quite a 
good selection of British produce here too. It's often a mix of regular stalls with a few new ones popping up, so I always like to have a good look around to see if there's anything new that catches my eye that I'd like to try before I decide what I'm going to eat. Walking around the market also gives you an opportunity to check out not only the stalls but what other people are eating to see what looks good. I've tried quite a number of the stalls here already. There's a stall there serving coffee, another opposite serving sparkling wine and champagne, one serving British classics, so pork pies and scotch eggs. We have one there serving Greek inspired dishes, a pizzeria. I tried Hank's New Orleans street food a couple of weeks ago, it was very good. Indian vegetarian dishes there and this stall is hugely popular in colder months serving duck confit sandwiches. First up today, I'm going to get a dish from Spit and Roast. Spit and Roast headline dishes are a buttermilk chicken bat with Korean hot sauce and Korean hot wings. However, I'm going to get their take on Canadian classic poutine. They serve their poutine chips cheese with a chicken gravy now the best poutine in london is going to be a tough call to make between spit and roast chicken take on poutine and the poutinery on brick lane which serve a more classic style canadian poutine but with the addition of the rib man's hot sauce if you're canadian try the poutinery with the addition of rib man's hot sauce it will probably be the best poutine you've had in your entire lives However, whereas the poutinery on Brick Lane serve a more traditional Canadian style of the dish with cheese curd and regular gravy, I love the spit and roast version here with cheese and their phenomenal chicken gravy with chicken pieces in it. Okay, poutine from uh, spit and roast. Let's find somewhere to try this. There are quite a number of places around the market where you can perch and enjoy your food. These oil drums turn into tables. There's also a very large amount of communal seating, benches and tables beneath the stairs where we came into the market. There are tables there with canopies, but they're part of the canteen restaurant. People do sit and eat them. They often turn a blind eye to it, but eating your takeaway at somebody else's restaurant is not really cricket, is it? Okay. Found a seat overlooking the whole market on the steps. So let's try the spit and roast poutine. Chips, chips, cheese curd, chicken gravy. Amazing cheesy chips. Okay, I'm going to tuck into this, and uh, then I might pop down and uh, see what else looks good. Maybe get a drink too. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, and maybe poutine wasn't the best dish to choose to showcase what this market does, but who doesn't love cheesy chips? There are some stalls serving some phenomenal looking food. There's one that does seafood, calamari and half a lobster with fries or chips, and they're spiralized. It looks phenomenal served with salad. There's another stall serving prosecco and champagne if you fancy something fancy. Um, However, there is this mix of comfort food and almost the street food equivalent of fine dining here. It is an amazing mix. So as I was saying, I've been to this market many times before and I've tried quite a few of the dishes from quite a few of the traders that are here today. I'm 
including the spit and roast dish I had earlier. So I thought I should also try something new. Not necessarily new to the market, but something new for me that I haven't tried from here before. And this is one of those things, the Shrimps the Burger from Shrimpy or Shrimp Up Your Life. I've seen people walking around with these before on previous visits and they look phenomenal. That's the great thing about this market. You can not only walk about and see what takes your fancy from the stalls, but also what other people are eating. And many of the stalls have samples of their menu, sample dishes on the front of their pitches, as you saw earlier from Spit and Roast and this stall. So it's not too hard to track down something you've seen other people eat if you're too scared to ask them where they got it from. This, the Shrimps the Burger, is shrimps or prawns, their signature salad. I've got the full work, so I'm going for the addition of avocado and smoked bacon. There's also some caramelized onions in there and a little chutney, all in a sesame seed bun. So I'm hoping it tastes as delicious as it looks. The smell is phenomenal. I wish you could smell it. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Okay. Shrimpster. Shrimp burger. From Shrimp Up Your Life. Let's go and try this. Okay. Back in the spot, overlooking the market. Right. Let's try the Shrimpster Burger. I've got it with additional bacon and avocado. Gonna be very difficult, possibly very messy. One hand. There's a lot in there, but it tastes remarkably fresh and light for a burger, as opposed to beef or chicken. Pretty good. A mix of uh, shrimp, avocado, the sweetness of the bacon, salad and the chutney. It's a great combo. Right, I'm going to tuck into this. And uh, maybe I'll be pretty full after this. But we're going to take another look around. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. These are phenomenal.
Okay guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna call it a day there. I'm stuffed. Um, hope you enjoyed this little tour of um, the South Bank Centre. Um, and the South Bank. South Bank Market, food market, where else did we go? Started at Westminster, all the walks all the way along to um, Gabriel's Wharf and the uh, the Oxo Tower. So yeah, hope you found it interesting, useful if you're visiting London. So until next time, toodles. Um, actually, I think what I'm gonna do, it's nice and sunny now, I'm gonna head across the river on the, uh, the other side of these bridges and uh, show you one of my favourite spots. Not on the south bank, just on the north bank on the other side of these uh, bridges. But yeah, phenomenal views from either side of these bridges along the Thames. Check out these views. What I recommend you do if you come into the South Bank, um, use these pedestrian footbridges. The uh, the view is obscured by the uh, by the train tracks, so come over on one side on one bridges on one of the bridges and go back on the other so one way or you'll have views that way along the Thames and uh, the other way you'll have views this way along the Thames Final destination of this incredibly tough and uh, taxing day's work making uh, videos. Gordon's Wine Bar. This is a whole nother story. Gordon's is possibly London's oldest wine bar and I would highly recommend finishing any trip to the South Bank here on the other side of the Golden Jubilee bridges but Gordon's and the North Bank of the Thames is a whole nother story for a whole different day. goes on on a blush party bus it sounds painful the uh, shrieking and screaming coming out of that rocking bus <laughs> <laughs>